Where are we today, Ev? Eh? Well, we're out on Middle Reef, which is just out from Hideaway Bay, where we live. And we're about to do some coral surveys, just to monitor what happens over the years from now on. Yeah, it'll be exciting to see how it changes and if we get another cyclone, what happens to it. It's only a very shallow reef. So to survey the corals out here on this middle reef, we're going to run out two 50 meter transects and do four along those, do four 20 meter coral transects where we measure the percentage cover of the corals along each of those four 20 meter transects. And we'll do that in three places along the length of Middle Reef, so three different sites. Then we'll be able to get some idea of the average coral cover. And we'll come back and go to the same places every year or so and uh, re-measure it. So that'll be quite interesting to see what happens. So Tony, how do you actually measure this percentage cover of corals while you're underwater? How do you do it along the transect tapes? Oh well, the, the way I do it, which is an established method from many years ago, is to measure the intercepts of the line with the living coral underneath it and the different species of coral that the line, the transect line actually runs over. So you just total up the number of centimetres that are intersected with living coral under the tape and that gives you a good measure of the percentage cover of corals on the reef. And we'll also take photographs so we can look at those over time and see the changes. Take photographs along each transect as well. Very good. Jump in. Jump in and have a look and measure the corals. We haven't actually done that yet. No place to be and nothing to prove. That's sure something I could use A cure for the air condition
in case you're wondering, the way we anchor doesn't damage the coral. We've done this thousands of times in many places and never caused any reef damage. Poor parietes is just peeking out on both sides. Yeah. Do you think it'll die? I don't know. Could well if something doesn't come along and knock off a bit of that montipora. Like a cyclone. Yes. Some of you have been wondering how we get into the boat after a dive. Well, here you go. It's easy once you have the map. Well, some of that was quite easy work for you because there, there's such huge fields of single species of coral. Yes. There's lots. 100 centimetres of Acropora's <laughs> 200 centimetres, 300. <laughs>
coral on that reef. It is now a fish. Before I've just been saying, wow, there's lots of coral on this reef. But now I can say, wow, there's 85% living coral or whatever it is. So what are the main species, Tony? Oh, just a crop or a common staghorn and Montipora something or other. I'm not certain what that world one is. Probably a equitubercularta. I hope you don't mind a few tables and graphs here. I'd like to show you the interesting results we found from our coral survey. Here's a table that shows the average overall coral cover from our three survey sites. Remember we surveyed four 20 metre transects at each site, so this is from a total of 12 survey transects spanning most of the reef. Amazingly, living corals covered most of this reef, almost exactly 90% cover. That's almost unheard of in our experience. A few soft corals grew on this reef as well, but they only covered 5% of the reef surface. There were also a variety of algae or seaweeds amongst the corals, but they only covered 2% of the reef. And lastly, there was only 3% of the surface of this reef that was not covered by some living coral or seaweed. You probably have some idea of what corals grew on this reef from looking at the videos. There were only about 30 common species of coral, so it's a low diversity reef. Here's a simple graph that shows the composition of the coral community on Little Reef. Most of the corals were fast growing Acropora species, especially branching staghorn corals. About a dozen species of Acropora coral made up fully three quarters of the corals we recorded. About 10 species of Montipora coral were also common on this reef and between them they accounted for most of the remaining quarter of the corals. All the other coral groups we measured only accounted for about 2% of living corals on this reef. So how does the high coral cover on Middle Reef that we've shown here compare with other locations on the inner Great Barrier Reef? Here's a graph that compares coral cover at seven locations ranging from Snapper Island up north of Cairns down to Facing Island off Gladstone. These figures are all from coral surveys we've made over the past few years. As you can see here, the average coral cover at most of these locations was only 20 to 30 percent. Rundle Island, just north of Gladstone, had slightly higher coral cover at around 50%, but the standout was Middle Reef here at Hideaway Bay with 90% living coral cover. In our 40 plus years of diving on the Great Barrier Reef, we've only recorded coral cover this high a few times before. One was on Hicks Island, up on the northern Cape York back in 2008, and another was on Snapper Island in 1995, before it was decimated by cyclones and floods.